When my friend stole from me, it wasn't enough. He also wanted to have my wife. Now it's about what I want. And I want nuclear revenge. You found the best place for your vengeful needs. These cheating revenge stories are not for sympathizers of cheaters. So, fair warning, if you feel empathy towards cheaters, you shouldn't watch this episode. We start off with a loyal caretaking woman who is betrayed by her fiance, who is already married. So she shared her cheating lover's story with the world. Next, baby daddy wants to have his cake and eat it too. His cheating resulted in karma with just desserts. Spoil yourself and stick till the end because this last story has a crazy twist. And when a cheating wife and business partner are exposed, OP only wants one thing, which is unfiltered revenge. Invite the like button to your slumber party, but make sure to offer it lots of drinks throughout the night. Then, just before bedtime, remove the light bulbs and spread the floor with Lego pieces. The following story is told from the female perspective. I'm diving straight into it. I dated a man for less than a year, who I met on Reddit. I'm 40, he's 35. It was serious, intense, and it all went fast. I love yous, proposed marriage, the whole shebang. I was all the way in. But then, he ended it out of the blue one day a couple of months back. I went from cloud nine, to a shattered world of disbelief. The sudden way he changed, prompted my sixth sense to go positively crazy. I did a tiny bit of research and poof, there it is, his very married self, and his lovely wife, on Facebook of all places. Yes, I'm stupid. He told me he was divorced. You're supposed to trust the people you love right? I confronted him, told his wife, then went into shock. Turns out I'm one of at least 100 women he slept with, or been in a full-blown relationship with, during a full decade he's been with his wife, he married only three. Many of them have contacted her over the years. She would shrug and stay. She tracks his GPS, sees he's cheating, or had the feeling that something is wrong, but does nothing. He showed no remorse. One of the things he texted me when I confronted him was, I was just supposed to sexy time you and leave you, but I didn't. His wife knew of me, but to her, I was just some friend who happened to be a girl. This crushed me when I found out. Apart from the betrayal, there was also the grooming. And I don't mean intimately. He was effortlessly mistreating me in more ways than one. He manipulated me from the first day we met. I'm a lot like his wife. Same body type, deeply loving, attachment issues, forgiving, the typical empathetic caretaker. Women like us are often safe harbors for broken men. Never, again. Enter, the revenge. Start of mission publicize and demonize. Never betray a woman with a healthy sense of justice, who also wanted to be a private investigator as a kid. I had so many screenshots of, indiscretions. A full narrative on just how messed up he is. It was a lot of things with lots of specifics, so I summarized all the bad things I had evidence for and shared it on Facebook. It was shared on a Facebook page, that was solely created for the purpose of being turned into a destructive nuke. You have to know this about his cheating booty. He loves the work he does, more than almost everything in the world. Even more than lying and cheating on people who love him. He's been working passionately at this job since 2005, working his way up the ladder to the low six-figure salary he used to earn. This job forces him to be in a city for up to four months, sometimes a few weeks. It's his only escape and relief, and the only thing he's good at. So this is my favorite part, I got him so fired from his job. Emails to HR, legal, his boss, his boss's boss, and of course I made sure to CC him. Did I mention I send them screenshots of him badmouthing them? Sent links to 10 family members. Spoke with three. It was clear that the jig is up, but they had no idea he was so awful. For example, he professed wanting to have sexy time with subordinates, narcotics use, and more. But now I'm going at it, I might as well go into it. His bad choices was open for all to see now, consisting of. 1. DUI, his second I might add, which he had in January and he hid it from the company. 2. Screenshots proving he sexy timed with a contractor and housed her in his hotel, during the job. 3. Screenshots of his lost weekend doing the White Rocks, and the Forbidden Skittles, when he should have been working on the job site. 
I'll emphasize I do none of that, and was horrified when I couldn't contact him for two whole days, while he disappeared. 4. Screenshots describing how much he hated his boss, executives and co-workers, because they were all idiots. 5. Screenshots of his violent temper, where he apologized for yelling at me, and other times he went over the line. 6. Screenshots of texts, talking about how he should quit and take the two friends he had there with him. 7. Screenshots of texts where he badmouths the CEO on brutally personal stuff. 8. Screenshots of his dating profiles and company branded clothing. He's a traveling project manager for a big engineering firm. Almost always west of the Mississippi. Today I read an email sent to me last week, confirming he's fired. I jumped so high, it felt like I was floating. Why does this matter? Because his job is not only everything to him. And his tool for cheating successfully, as he travels 90% of the year. He also hides in it. It's like removing the darkness of the shadow on a resting parasite. Forcing it into the sunlight. He used his job as a weapon against his wife, so many women, and against any accountability. No more. He can't escape and is forced to stay home now, trapped. No more freedom to use and abuse women at will, with no consequences. He's furious. Good. He knows it was me. Even better. But he'll just find another job you say? Oh I'm counting on it. That's why I created phase 2. I'll email them too. And the company after that, and the company after that. It's a pretty simple email I created, that links you to the biography of the bad stuff he did. Just gotta lift my finger and press send. If he changes and becomes a decent human being, great. But it's futile, it's too late. Enjoy this destruction you brought upon yourself. This is also for all the previous girlfriends you hurt. The following information is added by OP. The Facebook page is still up and will remain visible for now. No, I'm not going to post the link. Too much identifying information. I don't want to destroy his family. I just want him to stop hurting women. I'm hoping this will. 1. Really piss him off and. 2. Spooks him into getting the help he needs. One of the last things he said after I confronted him was. I know how this ends. Meaning his wife will never leave him and he'll face no consequences. Think again Tootsie Roll. Some more information I can share. He has plenty of money. Low seven figures in retirement accounts. His wife won't suffer financially because he's fired. They won't lose their houses or cars. But he has lost his outlet for evil, even if it's only for the moment. I'm not worried about him coming after me. I have nothing to fear from the truth. He sounds like my prick, soon to be ex-husband. He cheated on me behind my back, without my knowledge, for six years. In those six years, this walking talking moldy Wienerschnitzel, had sexy time with 92 different men and women. He only used protection with less than half of those people. The same time he was still having sexy time with me. You can't make this stuff up. I'm immunocompromised, which means my immune system is weakened, and this human personification of a wet fart didn't give two craps if he gave me an STD or SDI. He ended up giving me chlamydia, I got tested and treated, I'm fine now, and that was what made him feel like he finally had to tell the truth for once. I threw his ass out on the front porch, and told him to get the hell out. I made him explain to our two kids why he wasn't going to be living with us anymore, and we're working with lawyers to get divorced. I'm being civil for the sake of the kids. But my lawyer and I are working to secure child support and alimony. As I'm bed and wheelchair bound and can't work, he may have to get a second job soon. The following story, is told from a female perspective. For context, I'm a 20 year old female. The father of my first two children is 26, and we're going through a rough time in our relationship. He was working night shift as a janitor in a nursing home, while I was going to college for nursing during the day. We had a one-year-old, and I had just given birth to our son three months earlier. There were days that I took him to work, because I needed the car for college and we had lunch together at the nursing home. He only started working nights about a month and a half before this, so he would take the car at night while I was at home with the kids. There was a woman that he worked with that I had gotten to know pretty well, when I would bring him his lunches. We were all friends, or so I thought. 
He was supposed to be waxing the floors at night when no one was up and about. Just so happened my cousin ran into him and her having drinks at a local bar, on one of the nights that he was supposed to be working. Starts a massive fight, I got off early to go there, get the usual excuses of, just friends, blah blah blah, won't happen again. About a month later comes, the talk. We have been fighting too much, let's keep this amicable for the kids and stay friends. Mind you, the house was mine, I paid the bills with grants and scholarships I earned through school, the car he drove was mine too. Just a few things to clarify. I didn't own the house, I was renting it and he was living with me. I would be nice and allow him to stay till he got something figured out, still take my car to work, I still fed him, all that good nonsense. Then he starts being loving and we continue a physical relationship. I happen to be feeding our son one morning while he still sleeps, and his phone goes off. I know, I know, don't look for it if you don't want to know right. Turns out he's been carrying on a relationship with the other woman, the whole time he's been with, me. It would have been fine if that's what he wanted, if he wasn't doing the same with me, at the same time. Start, petty revenge. I crawled back into bed with him, without my sleep robe, and he snuggled up like he always does. I took pics from his phone, spicy ones I must confess. I sent them to her from his phone, along with a very nicely, in my opinion, worded message explaining everything that he had been up to, and into. Then I got dressed while hearing the sweet and wonderful pings from his phone, and continued about my day packing his things. He woke a few hours later and went for his phone first thing. I happened to come into the room as he's trying to call someone. Of course I can't imagine who that might be. And when he turns to look at me, I can see all the blood rush from his face. He can't even mount a defense, as I tell him all about the conversation me and his new girlfriend had, along with some photos. All his things are now out on the porch and boxed up. I tell him he no longer lives in my house, and to leave. He starts to play the victim card and blubbers. But, where will I go? So I told him that he better call his girlfriend to come pick him up and live with her, because he sure as hell isn't using my resources and my vehicle anymore. He looks shocked and confused, and to me, that sounds like his problem, and I shut the door on him. I had been with this man-child for years. We knew each other long before we got together. I was really young and I moved in with him as soon as I turned 18. He pretty much groomed me to be the wife and mother from an early age. I did everything from cooking, cleaning, working and taking care of first him and then our children. Hell, I was even willing to still let him live there, not paying bills, eat there, and drive my car for him to be sleeping with both of us at the same time. Gave my body, heart, and sanity to this man. So you might understand, I didn't lose a wink of, sleep over what I did, but I did learn a good lesson. Was it petty, hell yeah, but it was deserved. You go go. I feel major predatorial vibes. Do you have any updates on how you guys are doing now? Is he with her? Is he still seeing his kids? I love these triumphant stories where you don't get sucked into the BS. Good for you. I hope you are doing great. Thank you, he sees one of our children, our son, one weekend a month. Our daughter refuses to have anything to do with him. He eventually got his life back together and even had the nerve to try and flirt with me. Not gonna happen. Ever. He better have saved those pics, cause he won't ever have the chance to be with me again. Wait, you dated a 20-year-old as you were underaged? I need to ask, how did this happen? And where were your parents? This doesn't justify his actions, they were wrong and you were clearly in the right. And I'm happy you're not with him anymore. Still, I can't get over the age thing. I know. Looking back now as a mother, I see how crazy that is. He was the older brother of one of my best friends. My parents didn't know anything was going on between us, till I was almost 18. I say dating is in hanging out, going out to eat and that stuff at that age. We never got physical till I was 17. Plus I was really mature for my age and ran with an older crowd. I moved in with him when I was 18. Wait. So if you knew the woman from work pretty well, and you considered her to be your friend, I'm going to assume she knew you were his wife? Then why would she be surprised by the pictures? She already knew he was married, right? It makes me think you're lying. Nope it's not fake, I would only call that woman an acquaintance really. We come from a small town, and I knew quite a few people who work there. I guess he had told her that we were split up and he was sleeping on the couch. 
Me and her still talked for a while after that, she apologized for her part in it. But I still didn't trust her anymore. My story has a wild turn, so be ready for that. I'm an engineer and worked in my field for a few crappy bosses, in crappy companies. Up until I decided I had enough and wanted to try for myself. I had a friend who was in economics and business, and when the opportunity came, we started our own consulting slash engineering firm. The first three years were horrible, as we busted our butt to get paying customers and make a buck. Competition was hard, commissions low, we barely made it work. But our firm's reputation slowly grew, we gained more clients, some even bigger and wealthier. So we started to make it right. In the fifth year, we had four engineers working for us. They were great, and we got new clients and projects as time went by. But somehow, I always had the feeling we barely made enough to pay the salaries. I have to be honest, I earned a very good salary, I could afford many things. But somehow the company's bank account was always around even, it's like the profits vaporized into thin air. I was the engineer, my partner did the money side, so I just let him do what he's good at and focused on my part. I began to suspect something was wrong, when my partner told me we needed to invest in real estate. There were benefits to it for the company, but as I said, I'm really not into the economics and taxes. I rather stayed out of that part, foolishly. We are an engineering firm, why do we need real estate? But while he kept emphasizing that it's a great opportunity, I thought to myself that he could be right. Later, after he went through with it, I actually got to see the real estate investment. I thought he would buy an office, maybe some land. Nope. He bought a penthouse, in the tallest building in town with a view of the sea. In short, the most expensive, needless piece of real estate one could think of. Something clicked in my mind. How come we barely break even, but can afford this penthouse? I started to suspect my partner is, hiding something from me, and I didn't like it one bit. The moment I could, I sat with a private investigator. He told me my suspicion sounds solid, but I need to get an accountant, not a PI. He recommended an accounting firm that specializes in finding such leaks, and I went on and hired them. They assigned an accountant to me personally. I brought her to my office and explained to everyone, that she is my new personal assistant. Her, being the young and good-looking woman, made it much easier to explain my sudden decision to hire an assistant. Because I rejected to hire one in the past, due to our financial situation. My partner objected briefly, but I said I really needed an assistant, and if we can afford real estate, we can afford her. She was fierce, and got to work immediately. And oh boy, what she had found. Turns out, the company was doing very well actually, but the money was hidden in so many places, it was hard to follow at all. It seems that my partner, had the habit of hiding the money until it was forgotten somehow, and then. I don't know what followed, I suspect he took it, but it was hard to prove. I returned to the PI and hired him, I wanted him to find all the money my partner stole, all the hiding tricks, everything. The PI had all sorts of interesting tricks, once he showed up in our office pretending to be a potential client, then got all paranoid in the meeting, and demanded we all keep our phones on the table in the reception. Turned out, he used the opportunity and his assistant cloned my partner's phone, while we wasted time in the meeting. Then he took my partner out to talk, and I installed specific software on his computer. All these efforts brought a ton of information. He found the bank accounts, the access passwords, all the expensive investments, pretty sure he found everything. In fact, he found too much. As he sat in front of me and showed me something I didn't expect in a million, years. He showed me the pictures, of the man I trusted, sharing a very intimate moment, with my wife. With my actual wife, the woman I'm married to. I was devastated. This man stole the fruits of my hard work, and now is sexy timing my wife? He knew he was stealing from me, abusing the trust I had put in him. But also wanted to take more from me, he wanted to be with my wife. Now it's about what I want. And I wanted revenge. A hard one, one that will burn them both to the ground. The PI was way more experienced than me. He calmed me down, and explained how violence will only get me in trouble. I had to think from my brain, not from my anger. He was right, but what could I do? He just smiled, and slides a thick folder towards me. All the information you need is here. I bet a smart man like you, will figure something out. For days I walked everywhere with the folder in my briefcase, couldn't stop thinking about it. I should have gone to the authorities, shown them the evidence and let them do their job. But they will take time to investigate, then wait trial, 
Then after years, maybe, what would I get in return? 10% of my money back if I'm lucky? And all the while, he is sexy timing my wife. Nope, bad deal. I thought of doing something violent, but doubt I can pull such a thing, it would come back to hunt me after. Only after a week I cooled enough to think straight, and hatched a plan that might work. Part 1, Stop the Leak. I visited the bank and created a new account, where I was the sole holder, in the company name. A rule was set, to keep enough money in the old account to pay the bills, the rest would be forwarded to the new account. I changed all the passwords and contact info on all the company's accounts, cutting him out of the money. Part 2, Regain what was taken. I founded a new company, new bank account, new business identity. Also bought a shell company offshore. Now I started emptying all, the hideouts to the offshore company, and back to my new company. After the liquid money was recovered, I went for the investments. Stocks were easy enough to get, but assets like safe deposit box and fancy cars were a bit more complicated. It involved inviting him for a fancy dinner at my house, with the women of course. Imagine having to act like all is normal, while your wife and business partner socialize and laugh together. While you know, that they know about their dark affairs. Back to the story. So when he was at my place, I was able to let someone retrieve a safety deposit box from his. I won't go too much into that part, for obvious reasons. The box contained a gold watch and important documents, like the deed to the penthouse, ownership documents of some very expensive assets and such. The beginning to the end of this part took around a month, in which I cleaned him out completely. Left him only with what he had in his personal account and wallet, all the rest was taken before he could notice. Part 3, Humiliation. I already was seeing a divorce lawyer. In my country, you can't go through with divorce with fairness and a calm resolution. The court system believes the man should pay, and wealthy men should pay even more. Luckily, I was a partner in a failed company, that had all the assets taken away. I stopped getting salaries, and got into a small debt. I could prove I wasn't wealthy anymore. I didn't have to wait long for my final blow. After some time, while knowing of the cheating behind my back, I would notice this smile of excitement on her face, every time before she would leave for some hours. If you've been with someone long enough, you can notice these small changes in behavior and when they are out of place. And this, was definitely out of place. I waited for the night to come, and it would nicely fall into my lap as planned. One night, she tells me she's going out for a moment and the excitement is, radiating from her face. I knew my business partner is about to take my wife to the penthouse, for sexy time most probably. Surely, he had the keys to it, but the ownership is transferred to another legal person, another business. So he had no right to be there. I waited for her to leave, and followed her a short moment after. While driving, I notice we are reaching our destination. You guessed it, the penthouse. I see him meeting her there, taking her inside. This part was tense, I wanted to go in fast, but I need to refrain myself for a moment. So they had the time to, settle. When I got inside, I followed the sounds until I was sure it was the last door. I busted the door in with passion, and my wife's look was pure horror, as she understood the situation she was in. All I can say, is that this was a delightful moment for me, eternalized in my mind. I get goosebumps typing it down. I walked towards them and they must have been thinking I was about to freak out, but I just slammed the divorce papers on the bed, and walked out immediately after. They didn't follow me, and I called the authorities on them for trespassing. To which they were dragged out of the penthouse, in cuffs. The aftermath, my old company collapsed, after I got out, blaming my partner for reckless management and criminal activities. He shows his teeth, but realizes he has no access to substantial funds to cover his lies. He went bankrupt. My wife took a very expensive lawyer to divorce me, just to find out she can actually have everything she wants. Which is nothing of great value, officially. Being accused of infidelity with my business partner, and being arrested with him while trespassing, sure didn't help her case. The lawyer fee was her final straw. We sold our house, paid the mortgage, and the rest was split 65 to 35%. I got the 65%. Her cut didn't cover the fee. She moved back to her mother, and started working as a cashier in a store to pay, her debt. And me? When the old company collapsed, I forwarded all my clients to my new company. Most of my employees moved too. For the year of the divorce, I trusted my secretary and employees. Managed things quietly from afar. It wasn't good for the performances, but after it all ended, I came back as owner of a functioning company, and started getting better from a good spot. That is all so far, 
happy and for me, less happy for my cheating ex and her lover, my stealing partner. You stayed till the end, which means you're the one I make these episodes for. Thank you for your support, I really appreciate you. Subscribe, so you don't miss out on future episodes and show your vengeful devotion, by tickling the like button without mercy. Do you have any experiences surrounding the topic of this episode? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. I'll be seeing you, in the next one. Remember that these stories are shared for your entertainment. This content is to be taken as such, and nothing else. Royal AI, rejects advocation or instigation of illegal actions.